Green's family, Omani Tamba here, and we're here at the Arusha Declaration Museum. And family, we're here with our third Tanzania group, November 2021, and now November 2022. And this is another one of our historical tour, and uh, we're gonna get you right and connected to the incredible information of this uh, wonderful place this as far as uh, Arusha and uh, Tanzania to independence. How we normally do because they are doing renovation. Okay. Our renovation is perfect. Yeah. Uh, we're always open to a different presentation. The family, this is the courtyard and it's a nice peaceful town, very quiet. And this is where we start. We flew into Kilimanjaro last night and then we drove an hour to Arusha. So we're gonna be here for the next uh, few days. Also, this is, so that portion is closed. Please have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Of 
officially started to build at the first building of the National Museum of Tanzania from 1938 to 1939. And in 1940, it was officially opened. And it had a, like a single archive or a library. It had a, a few uh, exhibition of human evolution and the uh, in ethnography. So later on, after we gained independence, we only had one building during that time. And the building is in the restaurant. I'm not sure if you're, I'm sure you're from the restaurant, right? We have not been here yet. We just got here yesterday. Ah, okay. So are you going to, to, to be there some maybe? Yes, um, in, a, in about a week. Okay, in about a week. So if you get a chance to visit the first building of the National Museum of Tanzania, it's in Costa. And it's, it was named King George the Fifth Memorial Museum because by that time it was, it was dead already. So it was named uh, King George the Fifth Memorial Museum. But after the gained independence in 1961, it was renamed the Museum of the Resnon. But it, after we joined, uh, we united with Zanzibar in 1964, it was later renamed into the Museum, National Museum of Tanzania. So we are currently having seven branches of the National Museum of Tanzania. And uh, in the Resnon, we have two branches. We have the House of, House of Culture, where the first building is the King George building, uh, but we also have the Village Museum. The Village Museum explains the traditions, uh, the architects of the one twenty, more than 120 tribes in Tanzania, the, their lifestyle, the modes of production and everything. So it's a museum, but uh, it's, a, it's a place where different traditional huts, uh, build, uh, houses were built, uh, built, and it explains those traditions of Tanzanian people, of those tribes. But we also have another uh, two museums in Songea. One is the Madimadi Memorial Museum. The Madimadi Memorial, the Madimadi was a um, resistance that African uh, chief resisted against German colonialism. So it's now a national museum. But we also have a uh, Russian Palmikawa. Russian Palmikawa uh, was the one, he was the first prime minister of Tanzania. But also he was uh, a quite good leader who was Mwalikunyere, our first president, used to leave like all the mandates to him. When he steps down, so as he can like uh, uh, like start uh, uh, to, uh, wanting to participate for the election to be the president of Tanzania, he's the one who he left the country to Russian public uh, So he's one of the best political leaders, one of the key political leaders in our country. We also have another museum, the Mwalim Julius Kamarine Memorial Museum, our first president in Mutiama. It's the place where he lived, everything that he used, but it also, we, have, we also have another building uh, that is, contains every, the history of Mwalim Nyer and the struggles he had to bring the country to, uh, to peace and to independence and everything about him. In Arusha, we have two museums. We have the Natural uh, History Museum. Did you visit the idea? Um, the, we're going to the Natural Museum and the uh, National Museum in Dar es Salaam, and then ah, okay. we're going to also museum. go to the Jerma Bowman. So we have four museums: two in Arusha and two in uh, Dar es Salaam yeah, so on our we're tour. Going to visit the other one that is in Arusha, and one uh, last but not least is the Arusha Decoration Museum for us right now. So this is the I can say the one of the oldest museums, and it contains the actual, the history, the complete history of Tanzania soon after human evolution. Um, I feel bad because we won't be seeing so much inside because we haven't like mounted our museum already. But I'll show you some pictures around and some stuff like how it's going to be, and you see a very little about how the museum is going to be and the history itself. So this museum uh, was first was opened or was pronounced to be a museum in 1977. Yeah. So in 1967, Mwalimu Nyerere and his turn political party, Baba, Shamo, someone to make me feel Asante. Okay. So Asante is thank you. So I guess give me a favor. Yeah. So I told you my son. Yes. So uh, in 1967, Mwalim Julius Kambarinier and his political party, Tano political party, and uh, they they came up with an idea, like the vision. They had no a vision, like 
which which side did they want to uh, to for uh, like to side with? Did they want capitalists? Did they want the, the communists? Did they want the what? So they came up with the idea of joining of they came up with the idea of Nyama uh, uh, or socialism, call it an African socialism, whereby he decided that. <laughs> so uh, they announced the idea in the building, the museum building, and it's where every like all the discussions happen to those of our political figures. At first, the building itself <coughs> used to be a community center. Like people like uh, did everything in there, like meetings, different meetings, different celebrations. <coughs> it was just a community building, but. After the meeting happened inside the building, then it was uh, turned now into a museum 10 years later. So what is uh, Arusha Declaration itself? So Arusha Declaration, it was a meeting where Malik Julius Nye declared his political vision that he wanted to practice an African socialism in Tanzania. And why did he choose socialism instead of capitalism and everything? He chose that because uh, when the colonials left, they left us with nothing, like we, we had nothing because they didn't want us in their, in their leadership, they didn't want us to participate in anything that they did, so they left us in like completely nothing. So they had, uh, the leaders had to start from, from scratch and we had no money, we, uh, we were, like we were, I guess we weren't poor but we didn't have the the ability to utilize what we have and, uh, and gain a moral of what maybe we wanted. We didn't have much, many schools, we didn't have many hospitals, we didn't have, like we had very few things and there were a lot of people. So he introduced socialism so as he can, like, he can fit to what he had. So socialism had different ways of, of like, um, like um, making it happen. First, it was the idea of uh, villagialization. Villagialization, he meant that <coughs> those uh, people who maybe who are living in a village, it ha there has to be a, a, a small village, not, uh, not like a small, from 250 people has to stay in a village, from 250 to and above. They have to stay in a village. And if you're staying in a place, where the little people, there are maybe people are, are less than 250, then you have to move to shift from where you are, and you have to go and form another village in some some place, some other place. So as when the social services are being provided, maybe water, maybe schools and hospitals, then all people have to get uh, those social services in a single place because it wasn't possible for him to build schools in every place where people are uh, staying or available. So he had to, to create those villagialization that people have to move from different parts to stay in a single village so social services can be provided easily. But also, uh, the, those people who are in town, in urban areas, and had no work, they had to move from urban to village so as they can concentrate in farming because he believed that we had the very fatal land, we had the very we had manpower, so those people were to move from those urban areas where they like, uh, they were like matching guys, they have to move to the village and start farming so as they can produce uh, different uh, 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 products that will be sold and that will be enough for the community. But also he had to like gather ties, those uh, different sectors, like the sectors that were in private sectors had to be run by the government. But also he made so much in of many limits, limits, I can say limits, to the leaders, to the political leaders that had, they, they weren't supposed to own like the million the different uh, sources of income because they were like uh, public figures and stuff, so many, so much stuff. But also he insisted in self-reliance education that uh, when students are in school, they have to be told to take care of themselves, like to take care of the community. Like it doesn't have to be a theoretical education type, but it has to be a more practical education type. But they, if you, are, you have to be told those vocational skills so it can help you when you finish school. So those were a few uh, like implementations of the uh, Russia Declaration. 
even though it was a little bit hard for it to implement because the people who were given like at the task of implementing it made it I implemented it in a wrong way and the results were um, I can say half positive, half negative because of the of its implementation. For example, for those who were who were given the task of visualization, like moving people from one place to another, they didn't consider the nature of the place. For example, we have a, a certain tribe, a certain part in Tuara, they like they they have the cash nuts plants. Cash nuts. We call it Korosho. The cash nut plant takes five years to seven years to grow and give out the, the cash nuts, the, the, the fruits. So um, they shifted those people from their plants to other places. So when they shifted, they, they had to start from the scratch, like uh, testing if the soil is even fertile for those trees. They said that they were supposed to wait like five years or seven years later to start harvesting the cash nuts. And they even shifted them all, they even sent them in very far places so that they could even they couldn't even come back and harvest their products. So the implementation wasn't that uh, uh, good and the results as you can, uh, as you all know that if the implementation is not that good then the outcome won't be so good. So that was uh outstanding variation. But in uh, in the opposite side it helped so much in creating uh, uh, like a, a very unity country that uh, like that supported each other because if you guys are living in a socialist maybe place that you you have a single show you have a, you, a single farm where you produce like your your your, your crops and share it with the community it helps to create the, the, the like the people who are unity, unify, like unify, it's unifying people. Yeah. So that's one of the best things about ocean creation. I'm sorry I've been talking so much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Appreciate it. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, I didn't, no, I didn't even give, me, give you a chance guys to ask me if you want to say something. Well, we can ask questions now. Now? Yeah. I would love to. Does anybody have any questions about this museum? Let's go see the slave chains. There's no slave chains there. You're in the wrong museum. <laughs> so is this a national museum? Mm -hmm. Yes. So is it funded by the government? The funds? Yeah. To operate? Yes. Uh, all the, the government institutions receive funds from the government. But it receives because all the money that is generated from a certain organization, it goes directly to the, to the government. The money that is generated from the museum, goes direct the government, yeah. instead of yes. vice versa, <laughs> right? Yeah, so uh, what they do, the government collects all the money and provides to different institutions depending on the needs of the So it's used as a money generator? Pardon? It's used as a generator? I can say the, yeah. Yeah, sort of America is kind of like the opposite way, right? <laughs> I, I think it's changed right now because we also had to, to like to to follow the old uh, the old way of running museum because we used to be the non-profit institution, but it has changed all over. So we also had to start like uh, adapting to what they are doing, and it had to be changed into a profit organization. So are some of the uh, the monies that generated to operate the museum is that from donations from the public? Yeah. They come in and they can use what? They can. They can come in and what? Use what? The facilities? Yes, facilities. Like renovations, we, we just receive the money from the government to renovate. Yeah, yeah and we, we also uh, run like water, electricity, and everything. Yeah. So it has to go to the government and the government has to provide it to us. But there are no computers for the public to give them use. No, I mean, it's just a museum. It's not. Uh... It's not a community center. Yeah, it's not. So there, there's no. So you don't you don't have computers there, but for outsiders to use. It used to be a community center, but oh. not any. Since we we started like making profits, then we don't. Yeah, we 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 are, like we are starting to generate. So it's no longer a community center. It's a place for profit. Okay. It's a tourist site. I have a question. What's I don't understand, or, or can you explain the difference between? 
Tanzania and Tanzania. What is <laughs> why? Well, it's my pronunciation. Oh, it's, it's your pronunciation. It's just the it's same. Okay. Yeah. I say Tanzania. In so we, we pronounce it Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah, it's fine. 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 It's